when, uh, when looking at Bermuda, and I'm sure you've uh, heard this today already, so I'll just touch upon it real quick. Um, when you look at the banking industry and the financial services sector, the, uh, the BMA, which is our uh, integrated regulator, kind of oversees uh, the financial sector as a whole. So that includes the banks, the investment firms, the trust companies, the insurance companies, which, uh, which works out uh, quite well. Uh, what you also have is the Financial Investigation Agency, the FIA, which is an independent body. Unlike other jurisdictions where sometimes the FIA is linked to the police or, uh, or government, our FIA is independent. It manages all suspicious activity reports and acts upon their, uh, their findings, which for us is, uh, is great as, uh, as bankers. I'm sure you've heard lots about uh, TIAs today. I think we've also uh, signed another one today, maybe at 22 now. So that's uh, good news for, uh, for Bermuda and definitely keeps us abreast of uh, what's happening worldwide. In terms of uh, Ball 2, uh, as of January 1st, 2009, all banks in Bermuda have been compliant with, uh, with Ball 2, which is, uh, which is also a testament to Bermuda and, uh, and the BMA and the banks that operate within the jurisdiction. We are compliant, and uh, which sometimes you cannot say about other jurisdictions, so it's, it's a good thing. In terms of uh, Bermuda banks, we basically have four main banks on the island. Uh, Bermuda Commercial Bank uh, is a privately owned bank, recently purchased by, uh, by a group that's looking to expand its, uh, its services. Uh, mainly focuses on commercial and corporate business, but looking to get into perhaps some private banking. Um, Capital G Bank is a, another privately owned uh, bank, owned by the Gibbons family. It's a Bermuda-only bank that's been in existence for about seven years as a bank and about uh, 60 years as a deposit company. So uh, that's a full-service bank there that uh, tends to provide more services to the retail market as opposed to the uh, international market. Uh, then you have Butterfield Bank, which is Bermuda's oldest bank, about 150 years old. Uh, full-service uh, in products in terms of retail, uh, corporate, commercial, small business, trust, uh, custody, asset management, fund management, it can do it all. And then you have uh, HSBC, which we all know. Uh, HSBC purchased Bank of Bermuda in 2003, had a good integration, and uh, now they are, as we know, they're a multinational 80 country bank, and uh, they're also based on the island. So across those four banks, uh, Bermuda as a jurisdiction can provide pretty much anything that, uh, that our clients require. Uh, also, uh, what's worth noting within, uh, within Bermuda is there, there are no brass plate banks. Uh, in other jurisdictions, you'll find these types of structures where banks are, will be registered in a lawyer's office or in some building, uh, several hundred of them, as a matter of fact. You won't find that in Bermuda at all. Uh, every license that's issued by the BMA will be attached to a, a brick and mortar operation which uh, physically operates and services the, uh, the jurisdiction and the international market. Uh, something to also mention is that we have 63 uh, investment firms licensed on the island, operating and uh, quite sophisticated. Now, in terms of uh, who we service or who comes to Bermuda, uh, the breakdown can be characterized uh, into four categories, into four buckets. We have our uh, high net worth expat uh, clients that uh, come to Bermuda. They are your typical insurance executives, uh, fund executives, people who are in the financial services and tourism sector that earn quite, quite a bit of money. Uh, we have our international uh, individuals who reside in Bermuda but do not work. So people who choose Bermuda for whatever reason that suits their lifestyle, suits their situation. Uh, somebody like that would be a Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones or a uh, Michael DeGroote, uh, people who live in Bermuda. Then you have your uh, non-residential international individuals. Again, high net worth, ultra high net worths, people who uh, want to do business in Bermuda for whatever reason, uh, but don't reside. People like uh, Warren Buffett, uh, George Soros. And then you have your uh, multi-office, uh, family office uh, structure, family structures that come from abroad and are based in Bermuda. Um, and those are typically your four structures, your four types of clients that you'll see. Uh, utilizing Bermuda. In terms of uh, why they choose Bermuda, uh, basically falls into three categories and there's, there's much more than this but I'll just touch base on a few of them. In terms of investment, it is attractive to, uh, to our clients because uh, we do have a good uh, choice of products and services as I mentioned. Between the banks, the investment firms, the trust companies, the insurance companies, we can pretty much meet 99.9% .9 of our clients needs. If we can't, 
we can tap into our other jurisdictions that we uh, have relationships with, but most of the time we're pretty, uh, pretty savvy and are able to, uh, to accommodate any, uh, any needs. Uh, risk uh, diversification, whether it's country, whether it's political, whether it's currency, uh, Bermuda seems to address all of those uh, uh, concerns and uh, most of our clients can check out those boxes and feel comfortable uh, being domiciled or doing business in, uh, in Bermuda. Uh, the economy quite stable. We have uh, we have been not immune to the world recession. Obviously, Bermuda is quite uh, closely linked to the U.S. and to uh, and to Europe. So we have uh, felt a little bit of the the downturn. Our construction uh, business has slowed down, which again is a lead indicator for our for our economy. But recovery is is starting to to come through. So whether you your clients are interested in uh, looking at their uh, tax treatment and, and getting opinions on how they can better that. Bermuda has uh, proven that it can definitely improve current situations depending on the client's individual needs. Uh, Bermuda has um, quite a niche in the trust market and that is the vehicle of choice. And then confidentiality, obviously people who are wealthy, uh, bona fide and compliant in their, uh, in their home jurisdiction still want to have sometimes that added layer of protection. So they will domicile in Bermuda or structure something in Bermuda to, uh, to, to achieve that. And then asset protection also is a biggie. Uh, living in litigious environments, people want to uh, create, again, some sort of a structure where they're not uh, as uh, susceptible to attacks, and uh, we, we're definitely able to address uh, their concerns. We had a, a Chinese group come to us, and they wanted to launch a fund. And uh, having had, I, I guess, a historical concept of offshore, they said, you know, People tell us we want a BVI management company and people tell us we want a Cayman Fund. What do you guys think? I have some factual numbers that can give you some guidance on what the solution was based on hard factual numbers because I think it's evidential both in terms of the cost and the time to market that helped them figure out in their decision. Um, so essentially, there were the setup fees. And what you can see is that basically uh, to set up a fund company and set up an investment company, there wasn't a ton in it between the three places. So this whole kind of, you know, you go to Bermuda and, uh, you know, uh, everything's so expensive, I think it's been dispelled a little bit by the fact that that's actually a very competitive jurisdiction. Uh, you will note at the top, legal fees are slightly different by jurisdiction. You may ask why are legal fees different? Um, certainly the cost of doing bi business in Bermuda is a little bit higher than those, and that may reflect, for example, in legal fees as kind of one, you know, where it's not as linear. But you will notice on the rest of it, the Minister of Finance and the groups have been very, very uh, uh, tight in terms of ensuring that the costs in maintaining are low. And you'll notice too that interestingly enough, licensing has come in on investment management companies effective in the BVIs as of Jan 1, which changes the game there quite a bit for setting up an investment management company in BVIs. Um, what about ongoing? Uh, you know, people think about upfront fees, but they should certainly take into account maybe, what, five years of fees for the ongoing annual fees. And again, you can see there's some pretty big differentiation. Time frame. I think Bermuda's doing pretty well, actually. You know, if you look in terms of our competitiveness, we're actually a pretty quick to market and we're very competitive in our fee structures. So I take that as an example because the Chinese fund ended up coming directly to Bermuda and did all its business in Bermuda with the knockoff effect that that's going now to the Bermuda banks, uh, the knockoff effect that it went to a Bermuda fund administrator, the knockoff effect that they incorporated a, the, a, a secondary company for one of the promoters. Uh, got two directors. We've got excellent professional directors in Bermuda, independent directors as well that you can get on, um, you know, strong linguistic characteristics. So there's a bit of a real world example if you want to get some tangibility to the fact that I think that old myth about Bermuda being slow and more expensive is pretty much out the window. And that's part of that renewing perceptions that we want to try and, you know, get the message out to people.